Hello and welcome to episode number 62 of Photo Kitchen. I'm your humble host, MD Welch, and today we're doing exactly what YouTube wants more of, a Sony FX3, FX30 camera build. Now, I say this with a little bit of tongue in cheek because there's a lot of these videos out there already, but I promise you that we're going to do something different here. First of all, you're going to get three builds, not one, two of which are going to be handheld, one of which is going to be mounted on a tripod. We're also going to test out two different types of cages available for these particular types of of cameras and uh, there's going to be a lot of new information there's going to be some interesting information and there's even going to be some application of older gear that maybe has been forgotten about left in that drawer or closet that we all have for the gear that doesn't make the list anymore so any camera build starts with a good camera cage we have two in the kitchen today one by small rig and another by tilta and you might be asking yourself md why do you have two cages for one camera well, I started off with a small rig cage, and weirdly, I still love the small rig cage. I think it's a better cage than the Tilta. I think it has a few features that are better than Tilta's, and even though the Tilta is not a bad cage, I really do like the small rig. It has a few nice features, like it has this little uh, latch here to open and close to make it easier to get a battery out of the camera, those types of things. However, when I went to go mount this to a tripod, I ran into some issues, which we're going to see a little bit later on. But let's talk about one thing I do like about the small rig cage over the tilt cage. The first thing about the small rig cage that I prefer over the tilt cage is how the HDMI cable protector is used and mounted. Just about everybody buys these cages to protect that HDMI connection on the actual camera. And both cages have a solution that bolts onto it. Now, the small rig cage uses a flathead screw to mount to the front of the cage here. And by the way, both of these actual cages have these little cool magnetic uh, features or little tools here. So when you're attaching items like that, you have access to them. Now, the small rig flathead screw with the tool included, easy to attach. It also has this large knob to tighten down and secure that connection. These are really nice features, especially if you have gloves on, you could manipulate this knob and tighten it down really nice. The Tilta doesn't actually use a screw. It has a small uh, knob at the top that you hand tighten down, and then a smaller knob or a small knob at the bottom to tighten the actual friction or hold in the cable. These knobs are a lot smaller to manipulate, so therefore they're harder to do with gloves. And because you have them right next to each other, I could see accidentally mixing them up. But the big issue here is that on the small rig cage, you can close the door to protect your HDMI port with this mounted. On the Tilta, you would have to take it off to close this down. And that's a problem because this is a small little thing. It could get lost easily. I don't like that. And for the most part, I mount this camera or leave this camera with the cage on with the HDMI protector. And I do risk stuff getting into that HDMI port. So the small rig has a definite advantage here in regards to protecting the HDMI cable. Both cages connect the exact same way. There are three supplied screws that you will mount into the body. The FX3 and FX30 have plenty of mounting points on here, and you're gonna mount them into the exact same points on the camera. So let's go ahead and get that tilted cage on since that's the cage we're gonna use for the rest of the video. And now we have the cage mounted again, the three screws here. And I can't say enough kudos to both Tilta and Small Rig for including a little flathead screwdriver. It's nice because you could always tighten these screws down to make sure that you have everything nice and secure. And we're ready to move on with our particular build. Now our first item that we're going to add to our handheld rig is a second handle. This handle is by Tilta. It's a very nice handle. It comes with a little strap. It also comes with a record button a little area at the bottom to include a battery to power the record button, as well as this nice little twist here that allows you to manipulate or change the position of the handle as you see fit. Now, when I bought this actual handle from Tilta, I thought that I was gonna really love using the record button uh, feature here because when I'm holding onto the camera normally, it might be kind of hard to see here, but when I'm holding onto it normally, my thumb strains to get over to the record button here, especially if I have any weight. I have to like let my hand ride up and slip and get to that. So I thought, oh, having a record button on the other hand here, that would make life a heck of a lot easier. Well, it turns out 
that the minute I mounted this on here, a lot of these features became moot. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount it on. There's a little NATO rail here. We'll go ahead and slide it onto the actual body. There's a little screw on the front. We'll go ahead and tilt that or tighten that up. And now we have our actual two-handed rig here. It is a little bit higher than the other hand, as you could see, but for the most part, it's a nice, comfortable holding rig here. I like the straps on the handle, but now notice that I can get to that record button here a lot easier with my thumb, mostly because I'm able to take the weight with my left hand and let that right hand ride up to that record button. There's also a nice little jog wheel here. So uh, I no longer need the uh, battery or the battery door in here. So that will stay empty. So that's good news. I don't need the extra weight. And even though that the tilted handle is not really used much in this particular configuration, I will use it a little bit later on. So this makes for a very comfortable handheld position. I could tighten up both straps and also I can relax my hands. I can relax my fingers when I'm shooting. So I'm not going to have as much fatigue as I would if I didn't have these straps. So before we go too much further with the build, we should put a lens on the camera. And this is where we have a very interesting uh, type of technology or feature. You don't see this too often in a lot of these builds. And that is the 16 to 35T 3.1 cinema servo lens from Sony. This is a very powerful lens. It has all sorts of features. It has an actual servo zoom or motor built in or actually attached to the actual lens. So you could zoom in or out smoothly using controls on the camera. It it's geared for iris uh, focus and of course zoom. So you can uh, put additional features on there if need be. It is a full frame lens. This is not super 35, this is full frame. And it also has autofocus motors inside of it so it can manipulate or use the focus technology of any Sony mirrorless camera. So let's go ahead and mount this onto our particular camera here. And this lens really kind of precipitated the need to have a handheld rig and the handheld rig kind of precipitated the need to have a lens like this. Now, there's a lot of features on this lens, too many to really go into. So uh, I'll have another video on this. The next thing to add to our handheld rig is a top handle. And I have gone with the Sony um, audio handle that is included either as part of the FX3 or an FX30 add-on. And as you can see here, I've already added some accessories. I have a wireless pack uh, added to it, as well as a little shotgun mic, a Sony shotgun mic that actually came with my FS700. It has a little shock mount here. Um, I really like this little handle. I know there's some people that are not wild about it, but I think it's great. I have modified it a little bit. I have a small rig top plate here. That's what's holding on to the actual uh, wireless pack. And I also added this handle here with this little ergonomic grip underneath, also from small rig that makes it easier to carry the handle. Now the upside to this audio handle is that auto, all of my audio controls are actually on the handle itself. I can change um, uh, volume, I can you know, monitor one microphone over another, uh, and it's all here. If I needed to uh, drop my audio, I'm gonna mount it on a gimbal, on a jib or something like that, I just take this off and uh, all of my audio controls go off. And since I own an FX3 as well as an FX30, what's nice is that I could take this handle off, put it on my other camera, and all of the audio controls carry over because everything is isolated inside of the handle. Plus I have additional mounting points and another cold shoe. So I could even run a second wireless pack if I needed to. The handle does have a total of three uh, audio inputs. It has a small little port on the side here, which I don't ever see using uh, for a um, microphone or the small little mini jack port here, but you could even do three audio sources if you needed to. So I could actually run a third uh, a second pack off the back here, go into that port and then run my shotgun mic. So that's a really nice feature. But in this particular case, we'll just go ahead and mount this onto the top of the camera here. And this mounts just like any of the other top handles. It will use a flathead screwdriver, which I'm just going to cheat and get from my small rig cage here to tighten down. So the last part of our uh, first handheld build comes down to solving a problem that exists on these FX3, FX30, and that is the lack of an electronic viewfinder. Sony didn't build it into the camera because it's not practical. You're not gonna hold that camera right up to your face. You're gonna have it mounted someplace. You're gonna put it on a, a, a gimbal. You're gonna put it on a jib. You're gonna mount it onto a drone. Why put an EVF on there? But you do need something better than that little flip out screen. The flip out screen is not great. Uh, it gets in the way. 
way, especially with my handles mounted, it's not an ideal way to really work and see your features on the camera, not to mention glare. Now that's where a lot of people will mount a Ninja recorder on the top part of their camera. Great, you have a much larger screen, but you still have glare issues. And at the moment, I have a nice big recorder I'm running everything into, and I really don't want to spend any more money on this uh, particular build. So I have reached into the gear closet and I have pulled out this. This is the Zakudo EVF. This is the OG EVF. This thing's probably 10, 12 years old when they created it. And this was for DSLR video shooters that couldn't really see the back of their screens because believe it or not, there wasn't tilted screens back then. So it was really hard to see what was going on. So Zakudo created this. It has this little diopter cup, which I'm having trouble getting off that kind of snaps on here. Uh, and it makes it focusing really nice and easy, reduces glare in the sun. Uh, it's a fantastic little piece of equipment that I just never used enough. And uh, for this build, I figured, well, why not go ahead and uh, put it into place. The actual arm itself uh, or the actual EVF is mounted with a magic arm from Tilta. It's screwing into the top plate of my small rig cage here um, or my small rig plate on my audio handle. I mounted it upside down so it makes it a little bit easier to uh, work with, but I could twist it around. I could raise the height. I could lower the height. And I've connected this with an HDMI cable from Condor Blue. Um, and I love it. I absolutely love it because now I could have a third point of contact. I could hold this down. I can mount this. Uh, it's hard to see on camera. I'm going from one camera to another, but I can mount this really low and then get the EVF up, EVF up a little bit higher and um, just be really comfortable with a camera rig that is just, let's be honest, a little bit heavy at this particular point. Now, one downside to using this EVF that does need to be mentioned, it does not, for whatever reason at the moment, run playback through it. You hit the playback button, you get an HDMI signal not supported. I've reached out to Zakudo. They're trying to help me out with this, which is great. They're supporting a piece of equipment that's at least a decade old, uh, but we haven't found a solution yet. For some reason, Sony's setting a different uh, frame rate when it's recording versus when it's doing playback. I hope to have that solved. So at the moment, I'm actually unplugging the HDMI cable here to get the actual playback to happen, and then I look at it on the screen. That sounds like a headache, but for how convenient the EVF is, especially working in bright light, bright sun, being able to check focus, I'm willing to pay that penalty. For camera build number two, I have attached a top plate from Tilta. Uh, one thing to point out, the Tilta top plate does not fit on the small uh, rig cage. They kind of extend out in different positions so you can't mix or match. So I've attached this little top plate here that's going to allow me to mount a handle. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, didn't you just talk about the uh, great support and ergonomics of the Sony handle? Absolutely, but this handle does something that the Sony doesn't. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount this in. Now, this handle actually uses both friction and uh, a screw that threads into the actual uh, top handle or top plate here. So this does make for a very secure connection. So you have this slide in motion here. So it's biting into here and you also have the handle screwing in. Uh, this makes for, again, very secure connection. But what this handle does, because it is not comfortable to hold compared to the Sony, is it does do something interesting. We are getting more and more requests as uh, cinematographers and uh, photographers every day to do vertical content, right? So instead of horizontal, we're being asked to shoot this way with the camera. Um, and that could be uncomfortable, but this handle solves that problem. And I forget where I saw this on YouTube, but they turned me on to this top handle. And if you press this button, right here in the center. If you go ahead and you give that a press and then you give that a turn, what it'll do is it'll turn that into a 90 degree uh, handle here. And now you have your grip here this way. So now you can do 16 by nine shooting. Now I will say I haven't done any shooting with this handle this way, uh, but if I do plan on doing that, I think I'm gonna mount another handle, maybe one of those little small ball handles here at the bottom so I could do some 16 by nine. Obviously my viewfinder is not attached here, so maybe I'll mount it uh, off to the side. There's some screw holes here that I could definitely do that with, but uh, this feature is nice, especially if you know you're gonna be doing a lot of social media. It is very sturdy. It's just nothing you wanna carry around too much. So now we're on to the actual tripod mounting here, and I have this nice Tilta plate system with some carbon fiber rods uh, from small rig already attached to this. Uh, nothing fancy there. I have a plate that will connect it to my actual tripod. 
spot and I have a receiver here that will actually take the handles. Now, this is where the small rig cage uh, failed me uh, because the small rig cage does not go into this actual receiver from Tilta here. And there's just something at the bottom of the cage that's holding this from sliding in. Um, and that forced me to go with the Tilta cage here. Now I do want to say that um, it's not the actual Arca Swiss plate here, but it's something internal on the plate itself that's keeping this from mounting. And I do have something from Small Rig coming this way, but I do want to stress that Small Rig didn't really have anything on their website for this particular solution. I had to go digging for it. So bad move on Small Rig's part. And um, I'm going to go ahead and mount this on to my tripod. A few things to point out as far as the uh, ergonomics of this, there is a little plate, the camera will slide in and secure here, and then this little knob will, uh, tension knob will lock it down. And you can kind of mount it either way. I have this knob to the back and this lever to the front, so I can't accidentally hit it if I take it off, but you could uh, mix and match it. So now continuing with our third and final build, the tripod mount, we put the camera on a tripod. Uh, I already have everything secure here. I've taken off the lens hood just so things are a little bit easier to see. One thing that I did add is I have a Tilta lens support here on the front. Uh, I had to kind of uh, craft this on my own to kind of cobble together both the a lens mount that's built into the Sony lens as well as the uh, receptacle here. There's a little stud with a screw on it to screw into lenses or a cradle. I did a little modification there to make that work. This supports the lens. Uh, just when I'm on a tripod for a while, why not go ahead and support it? I've also unplugged my HDMI here for my viewfinder. You'll see why in a moment. Now, when I am on a tripod, I'm normally doing long form video. I'm recording events or I'm recording people doing speaking. So battery power is an issue. Uh, also running into recorder is an issue. I might even be asked to run into an overhead projector or a TV at a particular event, or I might just be doing a long day of shooting and I want to be able to relax and not have to worry about battery issues and I still need to run into my recorder. Now to do that, my first uh, part of this particular puzzle is this. This is the Blackmagic HDMI to SDI converter. Um, now, if you've been in the business for any length of time, these little converter boxes used to be a nightmare to deal with because you'd have to buy the right HDMI, the right SDI, power was a weird thing that had to be plugged in. Um, they were problematic to say the least. Fortunately, Blackmagic has done a great job here. You have two HDMI ports on one side, two SDI ports on the other, an in and an out for both SDI and HDMI. Um, and you also have USB power on here as well, uh, which we'll get to in a moment. Now I've mounted this into a little cold shoe uh, plate or a canvate plate that's available for S um, SSD drives. I have to say it's not great. It's being held on by friction and there's just not a lot of tension here. It's easy to slide it in and out. I was uh, mounting it to a cheese plate with some Velcro super glue. I'm probably gonna have to go back to that, but uh, this is a really nice piece of kit. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to mount this on my camera. Now, one thing to point out, I can't mount this on the cold shoe on the actual tilt rig here because of uh, the way of the audio handle, and I want that audio handle. So this is problematic. Uh, to be sure. Now, small rig has a solution to that. And this is my last uh, piece of my small rig love letter. There's this 45 degree angle plate um, where uh, Tilta runs a flat one here. And that angle plate allows you to mount in this particular type of unit and you don't need to have the handle over here on this side. So small rig again uh, for the win, at least for me. But since I have this handle here, I'll go ahead and leave it mounted. And who knows, maybe somebody at the last minute says, hey, we need to, uh, can you grab the camera? Can you run and follow us? Yeah, sure, I could. It's heavy, but I can. So now that I have this mounted here, actually what I'm going to do before I mount it, let's take that off. I'm gonna take a second Condor Blue uh, cable here. I'll take the handle down to the side and I will go ahead and mount in my HDMI cable and tighten that up. There we go. So now I have my HDMI coming out of camera and then I will take my Condor, uh, I'm sorry, my Blackmagic converter here. I'll go ahead and put that in. And of course I'm tilting the handle back. So I have a little bit of gravity here uh, working for me. This is not the most secure connection. Look around, 
HDMI in. Now for HDMI out, I could run it out to a long HDMI cable, put it into a projector, put it into another monitor, put it into a recorder if I needed to. But in this case, since I still have my EVF here and it just kind of looks impressive, I'll go ahead and mount that over here to this side. And now HDMI out, uh, into my actual viewfinder. Now, for my recorder, I have SDI out here and I would just run that out. I would just drop an SDI cable and run into my recorder and be able to uh, pull a feed off of here. And also next to SDI out, it might be hard to see on camera, but there is a USB-C uh, power plug here, uh, which I'm gonna solve that particular problem in one moment because this does need power. It doesn't get any power from the HDMI. Now. For both the actual converter and the camera itself, I do have that battery issue that I need to solve. The Sony cameras are great. I, I love the system. Canon makes great stuff, Fuji, Panasonic, Nikon, they all make great stuff. But one downside to the mirrorless system, especially with Sony, when it comes to um, video format, is that you just don't have as much battery life. So I'm going to solve two problems with one battery, and that battery is going to be a brick battery. Uh, this is an Anton Bauer brick battery. Um, it's gold mountain in this particular case, and this is a pretty decent size one, but I have several gold mount batteries. This is just the one that I picked out of here. It does have USB and a P-tap on here, but I'm actually going to use a mounting plate for this particular problem. Now, this is also by Camvate. Um, I'm not wild about this either, but it does have USB as well as DCI in, two DCI ports, and a P-tap or D-tap on the bottom. It also has really cool, it has a little power switch here, so you could turn the whole thing on and off from getting power. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount this on the back. I'll have my handle move down a little bit here so it's just not in the way. Come on to here. I'm gonna leave the battery off just so you can see where this these items mount up to. Now, for the actual converter, this is a real simple solution. Uh, a decent USB-A uh, to USB-C cable will work. And I will go ahead and plug this in here oh, on the first try. And because it's, it has a little bit of length here, I'm going to route it up and behind the battery panel and I'll just go ahead and plug it in. And that solves my USB uh, power here for my converter. Now for powering the camera, you have a couple of options. The Condor Blue dummy battery set up here, everybody has a solution to this. Uh, it goes up into the actual battery terminal and then you have your P-tap or D-tap here that you could plug into it. I've never been a fan of these cables. I do not like them. I always worry about what it's gonna to do to my battery port. I did pick one up just in case this other system didn't work. This is just a P-tap or D-tap cable to USB-C, and it actually has a little bit of a modifier here, so it's controlling that wattage. And I'm just gonna come in, and of course, because I can't remember the direction, I'll take my battery plate off here. There we go. I'll plug this into the bottom of the battery plate put my battery plate back on my camera. I think I could run this underneath. Yep, indeed I can. And then there's just a little door on the side of the camera and I'll go right in front of the camera and I'll plug into USB-C and there we go. Now the beauty of this system, I have to mount the battery upside down unfortunately, but the beauty of this system is once I plug this in, it's probably impossible to see, but I will get a light here on the side showing me that I am actually uh, powering the converter. And I actually have a little indicator when the camera's on telling me that I am powering the battery as well, or the camera as well. One nice thing about uh, the Sony system is when the camera is off, this battery will actually charge the internal battery. So if you need to run and gun, you can, um, and that solves my power issues for the particular camera. So again, we would love a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, share with your friends. Uh, in the comments field, are, what are you doing for your FX3, FX30 build? Is there something that I left out? Is there an aha moment in the video? We'd love to hear from you in the comment field. And until next time, I'm MD Welch, wishing you all the best from the Photo Kitchen.